Hello, good evening. <clears throat> Kumusta po kayo? How is your weekend? How is your Saturday? And I hope everybody is okay. Kahit may mga problema, still alive and fighting. Kahit may problema, dapat hindi nagwindle, nag shrink yung faith natin. And being said, I'm about to share to you tonight how to increase our faith. Paano po natin uh, ma-increase yung pananampalataya natin? Na? So, before, one advice lang, before reading the Word of God, we have to worship Him first. Uh, paano po mag-worship? Worship comes in many forms. Pwede po tayong kumanta, maggitara, pwede po tayong makinig ng worship songs, and maraming forms of worship. Yung importance kasi ng worship, when we worship, when we worship God, everything changes. So, dapat, we start our day with worship. Before we read the Bible, We start it with worship. We start it with prayer. Everything that we have heard, everything uh, what we have read, everything what Jesus did, hindi natin receive if we do not have faith. So, topic natin tonight is about faith. Lahat ng binigay ng Panginoon, lahat ng ginawa ng Panginoon sa cross, hindi natin marireceive if wala tayo nito. Wala tayong faith. So, it, faith is very important as a believer, as a Christian. The scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Diba? Sabi sa Bible yon. Ito yun. Faith is the means by which we export heavenly goods and import it into our lives. So, ito yung faith, yung nag export tayo ng mga blessing galing sa langit and import it sa buhay natin. Ito yung faith. Faith is the means by which we receive all that God offers. Ito yung faith. Yung natatanggap natin, lahat ng ino-offer o binibigay ng Panginoon. Faith is the means by which we receive all what God desires to us, to what we may be have become. So, ito yun, yung dinidesire ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, kung si, maging sino tayo sa purpose natin, it is because of faith. So, yung faith kasi hindi parating mataas, hindi parating mababa. So, some of us feel that we are backtracking right now. If, ikaw to kapatid, if you feel like parang nagsishrink yung faith mo, if you you feel that your faith is beginning to shrink, kasi minsan, may mga times na we're not exercising it. Maybe we're in a situation now or circumstance na You're in a mess that you shouldn't have done. Kasi may mga bagay na dapat hindi naman natin ginagawa. Pero nagawa na yan, nandyan na yan eh. And you're asking yourself that naging good example ba ko sa faith ko? Kahit believer na tayo, Christian na tayo, matagal na tayo nag-serve kay Lord. But I uh, just want to encourage you right now and tell you that many of the characters in the scripture in the Bible that are righteous and anointed and mighty, mightily men of God also feel or have low moments of their faith. So, 
kung ikaw to kapatid, hindi ka nag-iisa. Before sa Bible, maraming tao na ginamit ng pang- ginamit ng Panginoon also feel low moments in their faith. Even ako, 'di ba? Walang perfect na tao. We feel low moments of our faith. But hindi dapat 'to naging excuse for this instance, no? If you are struggling in our faith, whether you are doing really good kasi kahit you are doing really good sa faith mo ngayon or nag-struggle ka. Kasi dapat yung faith is hindi dapat, dapat tayo naging comfortable. I'm telling you right now that is not faith. If you are comfortable right now with your situation na kahit leader na tayo, nasa church na tayo, and when we're being comfortable na ganito, it's not faith. Faith requires us to go higher. Faith requires us to ask for more. Faith requires us not to be satisfied to yung faith. Comfort does not require faith. It does not require to act in faith. Ito yung comfort. So, ayaw ng faith yung naging comfortable tayo. Nasa comfort zone tayo. And if this, and if it does require to act on faith, it does not require to grow in faith. Kasi so, dito tayo dinideceive ng kaaway. Maging comfortable tayo. Na to the point na wala na tayong ginagawa na iniisip lang natin na ay, save na tayo. Alam ko na saan yung destiny ko, final destiny. But it is not fate. It's the deception from the enemy. Gusto ng kaaway na maging stagnant ka, flatline. But God wants just us to level up, grow, ask for more. Because if you experience God's presence, you want it more. You want it more. Diba? Gusto natin more of Him, God. More of you, God. More of you, less of me. Diba? Faith is seeking more and more and doesn't need to be complacent. It asks you to grow and increase you from glory, from glory, to glory, to glory. Faith is not staying at the same situation or the place where you are right now. So, it seems na kung hindi kayo nag-agree nito, that's what the Bible says. Faith requires us to move. Gusto ng yung faith, yung the word faith is action. The word faith is not dead. The word faith requires movement, requires action. You need to grow your faith. You need to climb higher. You need to go for more. We can always remain thankful and not satisfied. Pwede yan eh. Yun yung gusto ng Panginoon. Magpasalamat tayo sa Kanya, but I want more God. It's not being greedy because sa Kanya ka humihingi. And yung hinihingi mo, hindi naman material bagay. Yung hinihingi mo, yung revelation niya, yung wisdom niya, yung presensya na yung glory niya. Be thankful and wanting more. Diba? So, I'll be sharing to you four keys, apat lang, on how to increase our faith. First is, tuloy pa ulit-ulit na lang to, kahit sa church, sa cell, at hindi kami magsasawang ulit-ulitin to. Kasi ito yung pinaka-important. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So, the first key on how to increase our faith is the Word. We need to read the Word. We need to hear the Word. Sabi nga sa Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. Diba? Your faith comes stronger. Your faith strengthens when studying the Word of God. Not just by reading alone, but studying. Alamin mo. 
mag-meditate ka. Seek not just plainly reading at wala ka namang naintindihan. ba? Diba? Dito tayo lumalakas pag pinag-aralan natin yung salita ng Panginoon. But by, by studying the Word of God alone, gusto mong malaman eh, ano yung truth behind the Bible? Ano yung truth of God's promises sa buhay natin? Ano, ano yung sinabi sa Bible na gagawin natin? Diba? <clears throat> When the enemy wants to destroy you, ito yung ano eh, uh, gusto talaga ng kaaway sa buhay natin. Nasirain tayo. When the enemy wants to destroy you, destroy us, he will first remove yourself from the word of God. Yun yung unang gagawin niya. Tatanggalin ka niya sa salita ng Panginoon. Tatanggalin ka niya sa pagbabasa ng Bible. Tatanggalin ka niya sa pagpakikinig sa salita ng Panginoon. The word of God is the first line of defense against our enemies. Ito yung unang linya ang depensa natin again sa mga kaway. Bakit? It's because the enemy the enemy primarily works in and by ulitin ko ha yung enemy gumagalaw o nagtatrabaho in and by the word deception. Ayaw nila ng word of God sa buhay natin kasi gumagalaw sila through deception and the word of God is the truth itself di ba sabi nga sa Bible di ba and the truth shall set us free so the enemy is the de- deception is defeated by the truth of the word of God so ayaw ng kaaway na may alam tayo sa salita ng Panginoon ayaw ng kaaway na may depensa tayo. And the first line of defense is the word of God. The enemy will do whatever he can to take the seed yung naitanim sa puso natin. Or, minsan hindi pa natanim eh. Na, uh, ano na, napakinggan pa natin. So, kasi pag naitanim na, na, na yung word of God sa puso natin, mahirap na kunin yun. And, Although hindi minsan nadideceive pa rin tayo, di ba? But yun yung main goal or agenda ng kaaway is na hindi maitanim sa puso natin. Kasi when that seed is planted, it is bound to grow. And it is bound to be fruitful. And yung tree na mag-grow, magagamit yun. Magbe-bear ng fruit. So, ayaw na kaaway yun. Na tayo lumago, ayaw na kaaway, na tayo magamit ng Panginoon. ba? Diba? We become strong and we become fruitful and be of use of God if na itanim yung word of God sa, puso, sa buhay natin, sa puso natin. So, kailangan natin, we need a daily dose of hunger of the word of God. Of the word of God. Tulad nung story sa Israelite, uh, Israel, Israelites, yung nagre-rely lang yung Israelites sa uh, every morning sa mana. Yung umuulan lang ng mana every morning. Ito dapat yung hunger natin. But, di ba, hindi sila inalaw ng Panginoon na mag-keep o mag-store. Dapat, they will just consume the mana yung time na yun, yung day na yun. Kasi bukas, may panimbago na naman. ba diba? Ito yung ano, word of God. We need it fresh daily. So, bakit fresh daily? Bakit hindi yung word of God last week magagamit ko ngayon? Ito, sabihin ko sa kayo pati. The word of God is the daily bread. Yesterday's revelation cannot defeat today's enemies. Yung revelation ng kahapon, hindi makaka-defeat sa panganib natin ngayon. So, we need the daily bread. So, di ba paulit-ulit kaming nag-urge sa inyo na 
do your devotion daily. Kasi it is by daily need natin word of God. We cannot just think na nagbasa na ako kahapon. No, maybe you you'll miss the very promise that God wants to speak to you right at the very moment na nabasa tayo. Di ba? Yesterday's bread cannot be strength for today's journey. Tama naman din, di ba? Yung kahapon na kinain natin, hindi yung magbibigay lakas natin sa journey natin ngayon. Di ba? So, yung magbibigay lakas natin sa journey natin ngayon, it's by taking the bread now, today. So, this is the food of the Spirit, yung Word of God. And we need the food of the Spirit because faith feeds on the Word. So, if tayo, hindi tayo regular devo, nag-devo, hindi tayo regular nag-pray, hindi tayo regular nakapakinig ng Word of God, maybe this time, na-enlight tayo, encourage tayo na kailangan, mas kailangan natin kumain ng salita ng Panginoon kaysa kumain ng anumang pagkain natin. ba? Diba? God only requires us ba? Diba? O na magbasa ng Bible ah, kahit isang beses lang. But sad to say, ba diba, mas marami pa tayong beses kumain sa isang araw kaysa magbasa ng Bible. Hindi ko naman sinabi na mali yung tatlong beses kumain sa isang araw. Tama naman yun, ba? Diba? But Isipin mo, mas mas pinapahalagahan pa natin yung improvement sa sarili kaysa improvement yung sa spirit. So, maybe this message is for you, kapatid. And, may, and I, I believe this message also is for me. But I'm encouraging you because eto yung tama. This is what the enemy knows. He knows when you get into the Word, the Word will get inside you. Alam ng kaaway ito eh, na pag napasukan tayo ng Word of God, ay pag, pumut- pag nagsik tayo sa Word of God, nagbasa tayo, yung Word of God papasok sa atin. Ayaw ng kaaway yun. And the enemy knows when we commit to the Word, the Word will commit on me, on us. Diba? So, pag nagsik ka, kasi pag nagsik ka kay Lord, hindi ka maano eh. Hindi ka mapapahiya at pagbibigyan at pagbibigyan ka ni Lord kasi hindi nagre-reject yung Panginoon sa atin. Alam mo, tayo lang yung nagre-reject sa Kanya, sad to say. And this is the truth, kapatid. Na God is always welcoming us into His presence, into His marvelous light. And tayo lang po yung lumalayo tayo lang po yung nagsha-shy away, nagsha-shame because of guilt, because of shame, because of matigas yung puso natin, because of tradition, because of religion. But God wants, or is calling yun lang, eh. tinatawag ka ng Panginoon na, anak, andito naman ako. Anak, ano bang kailangan mo? ba? Diba? Anak, kung kailangan mo lang ito, andito ako. I am the solution to your every need. I am the Father. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the author and the finisher of faith. Yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. So, first is, the key to increasing our faith is the Word. The Word of God. Pangalawa is, the people around us. Diba? Tanong ko lang, are the people around us helps us grow? Yung mga tao bang nasa palibot natin, yung mga taong nakikisalamuha natin, nasasalamuha natin, sorry, are they helping us to grow our faith? Di ba? So, hindi naman sinasabi na hindi ka sumama sa mga taong hindi naniwala kay Jesus, but Come to think of it, either you will be the influencer or are you be the one who is influenced. Isipin mga kapatid, ikaw ba yung nagbibigay influence 
ikaw ba yung light or ikaw yung nai-influence so yun yung pangalawa di ba sabi nga sa bible bad company corrupts good character yun yung siya sabi nga ng mama ko birds of the same feather flock together So, paulit-ulit niya sinasabi yan kasi dati pasaway talaga ako eh. So, habang sinasabi niya yun, yun, pinapaalala niya, eh, kahit sa akin, parang ano na lang eh. Saying na lang. But, tama yung mama ko, ba diba? Kung sino man yung taong nasasalamuha mo parate, naging ikaw yun. Kasi minsan, kahit ikaw yung influencer, na-influencehan ka din eh. Kahit ikaw yung nagbibigay influence, minsan, minsan, nakukuha din natin yung ano nila eh. So, sa Bible, sabi din, do not be equally yoked with the unbelievers. Hindi naman sinasabing iwanan mo sila, but ikaw dapat yung magdadala sa kanila to the marvelous light. Ikaw dapat magdadala sa kanila sa presensya ng Panginoon. ba diba? Okay makisama, but dapat hindi makisama. So, yun yung pangalawa. The people around. Pangatlo, eto right thinking so minsan kasi di ba what the man thinketh so he is sabi sa bible sa proverbs kung ano yung naisip ng tao siya yung magiging you cannot uh, ponder the greatness and the goodness of god and then doubt hindi ganun. Hindi ganun. Hindi mo pwedeng dapat isipin na all oh, Panginoon ko, ano siya? Makapangyarihan, but nasa thinking mo, totoo ba talaga? You should not doubt God. Once you experience him and have communion with the spirit, you should not doubt God. Basahin ko lang yung Uh, sabi sa Philippians 4.8 uh, <clears throat> for a while finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is love lovely sorry whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy Think about such things. So, sabi dito, think about such things. So, piliin natin ano yung iniisip natin. Kasi, from our thoughts comes our actions. And from our actions comes our emotions. So, sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, dito to Paul sa Philippians, na, ano man yung mga bagay na tama, ano man yung mga bagay na pure, ano man yung mga bagay na lovely, admirable, mga bagay na excellent, praiseworthy, ito yung mga bagay na dapat isipin natin. ba? Diba? Alam mo yung may isang verse din na tinatawag na faith filter. Kasi dapat filter natin yung the way we think. Because, di ba? Kasi through our thinking, doon din yung nagaano yung faith natin eh. Nagre-react. So, 2 Corinthians 10.5, uh, we demolish arguments, sabi, sabi ni ano, si Paul, we demolish ar- arguments and every pretentious, pretensions that set itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. Ito, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So, kasi dapat, pag may faith ka na, and you know what is good and right, and you know it is bad and wrong, ba? Diba? Pareha, bad and wrong. So, alam mo yung tama at mali. Dapat, hold it captive, yung thought na yon. And, it change mo, it reverse mo, reciprocate it, to be obedient to Christ. So, bring the thinking into the sub- subjection of Christ. Dapat pag, ano eh, dapat alam mo yung word of God eh. Dapat alam mo yung first key 
before ka makakapag depensa nito. Kasi the devil is saying to us na ganito ka through your identity but when you, when you know the word of God, may panlaban ka. No, sabi ng Bible, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Diba? I am made in his own image and likeness. Mga ganong verse. Kasi yung panlaban ng, ng deception ng kaaway is the truth and the truth of the word of God. Diba? When the enemy gives us a lie, you introduce it with truth. Yung katotohanan. The brilliance of truth dissolves darkness and all its deceptions. Ito yun eh. Pag hindi mo alam yung katotohanan sa buhay mo na sinabi ni Lord, madali kang madisib. Hindi If hindi mo alam yung mga pangako and promises ng Panginoon sa buhay mo ngayon, you will easily shrink your faith. Maybe to a point you will give up. Di ba? So, kailangan natin filter our faith by right thinking. Ito yung pangatlo ha, right thinking. So, the last one is exercise or actions. Diba? Faith without action is dead. Sabi nga natin mong in sa introduction ko kanina na when you have faith, you have movement. Faith requires us to move. Diba? Faith requires us to grow. Faith does not require us, us to be comfortable. Na-amaze lang ako sa mga, mga movement ng Panginoon sa buhay ko, sa buhay namin. Because na hindi na I know na parto sa plan ng Panginoon because ayaw ng Panginoon na maging comfortable kami. Because when we become comfortable, then maging relax kami sa faith. Parang, parang okay na. Diba? It's okay not to go to church. It's okay not to pray. It's okay na hindi magbasa ng Bible. But then, ito eh. May tinuturo si Lord sa buhay ko, sa family ko na we should not be comfortable. Kasi alam ko yung promises ng Panginoon, sabi nga niya na I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, basahin ko lang sa James 1, 2-4. Ito yung time na sinasabi James now consider it pure joy when the testing of your faith because your faith produces perseverance so if faith is tested faith is trusted diba if faith is tested endurance starts to grow the world will live guarantees that we will face hardships and trials. Ito yun eh, nasa mundo tayo eh, nasa earth tayo eh. But, ito yun eh, but, God not, God doesn't uh, promise us to live an easy life. But one thing is promising us that He is there for us and hindi tayo iiwan. The scripture says that it is an opportunity of joy Because it is an opportunity to grow your faith and be closer to God. So I hope mga kapatid na this topic tonight, uh, maraming tayong natutunan, nabibless. The word of God, this word of God touches our heart because it touches mine. Now, uh, dapat yung faith natin hindi lang tumataas but nag-i-increase talaga nag-i-increase we're not just relying on the status we are right now na happy na tayo kasi may faith na tayo but no from glory to glory to glory to glory to God be the glory God bless good night and God bless everyone